يا راغبا في كل علم نافع ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور ادواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وآله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهدى We will study an important chapter that deals with purification known as the ruling on wiping over khuf and socks What is meant by khuf? Khuf is a footwear that is made generally of leather and this is how it used to be uh, uh, made it's something that covers the whole foot including the ankles and linguistically this is what khuf is however nowadays anything that people wear on their feet that can stay by its own and it covers the whole foot including the ankles has the same ruling what do we mean by wiping over it this is regarding the issue of wudu when we make ablution because in the verse dealing with ablution surah al-maida allah azza wa jal says that wash your arms to the ankles then Allah says wipe over your heads and your feet to the ankles this wipe over your head and feet to the ankles is recited in two ways with a change of a vowel and when you change the vowel the meaning changes so one meaning which is we all read it we say فَمْسَحُ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ إِلَى الْكَعْبَيْنِ and this translates to wipe over your heads and wash your feet up to the ankles and the other recitation goes as فَمْسَحُ بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلِكُمْ and this refers to wipe over your heads and wipe over your feet to the ankles. What is the, the significance? The significance that in Islam, instead of washing the feet, we have an alternative is to wipe over the feet. When? We will come to discuss the conditions of wearing such shoes or hoof or uh, socks. This is the only evidence? The answer is no. There are more than 40 companions, or 40 hadiths, that is, that states that the Prophet ﷺ wiped over his khuf, which gives us the clear evidence that it is part of the sunnah, it is part of the religion. So what are the conditions to wipe over your khuf? Scholars say that there are four conditions. Number one, in order for me to be able to wipe over my socks, I have to put them on when I'm in the state of purity. That is the minor ritual purity. How is that? Meaning that I have to be in the state of wudu. So if I wake up in the morning and I put on my socks, I can't wipe over them because I'm not in the state of purity. I just woke up. I have to perform wudu. Once I perform 
a complete wudu with washing the feet up to the ankles. Now I can wear my socks or maybe half an hour later or maybe a couple of hours later as long as I did not break my state of wudu. Once I put them on, then condition number one is fulfilled. I can wipe next time I want to make wudu over them. Condition number two, that these socks or shoes must be pure, meaning that the material they're made of is pure. I can't wipe over the skin of dead meat or pork. And I cannot wipe over socks or shoes that have impurities on them, such as drops of urine or the likes. And the evidence is that praying in such shoes is not permissible. So likewise, wiping over them so that you would be in the state of impurity would not be valid. Number three, the third condition is that wiping over these socks can only be made to uplift a minor ritual impurity. If I am in the state of Janaba or major ritual impurity, this is not possible. I have to take them off and have a full ghusl uh, uh, or shower or bath. And the evidence is the hadith of Safwan, may Allah be pleased with him that we were ordered if we were traveling not to take off our khuf or socks for three days and three nights, meaning we can perform our wudu by wiping over them for three days and three nights, whether we break our wudu due to defecation, urinating, or passing of wind, but not of major ritual impurity. In this case, we have to take them off and have the ghusl. Number four, the fourth condition is that the period must be honored. And what is the period? The Prophet timed alayhi salatu wasalam. The wiping over the socks or the khuf for a resident to be one day and one night, 24 hours. And for a traveler to be three days and three nights, that is 72 hours as reported by Imam Muslim. Now, when does the period of wiping begin? So how do we time this? Is it from the moment we put on our socks? Or is it from the moment we wipe? The most authentic opinion is the latter. So if I wake up in the morning and I perform wudu and I put my socks on and I go to work and I pray with the same wudu that I, the actual original wudu that I put my socks on, I pray Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha. I don't break my wudu. And this happens when the winter is due and night is so long. Or is it the opposite? I don't know. When I can pray all five prayers in a very short span of time. And I go to bed while my, having my socks on. The following day, I wake up for Fajr. I perform wudu and I wipe. This is when the clock starts from the moment I wipe in my wudu. So I can pray the whole day, whether I break my wudu three, four times and I wipe over and over again, until the third day, Fajr time. If I wake up before the 24 hours are over and I perform wudu and I wipe, then I still can pray Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha if I do not break my wudu with this wudu where I wiped over my socks. Now, having said that, it is a misconception among a lot of the Muslims who think that the time, that is the day and night, 24 hours, if it's concluded, 
my wudu is broken. And this is not true. If the 24 hours is, uh, are over, I cannot wipe on the socks anymore, but my wudu is still intact, even if it goes on for 10 hours afterwards. Because uh, the wiping does not break by the end of the 24 hours. What breaks is the permissibility of wiping. So you have to be careful and notice the difference between the two. What can I wipe over? The socks, the shoes, the hoof, any footwear that covers, so I can't wipe over sandals or flip-flops. I can wipe over anything that covers the whole foot, including the ankles, and it sticks, it stays by itself. It doesn't fall off. Also, I can wipe over the turbans. And this headgear is not included because this is not a turban. I can take it off and put it on again. But I'm wearing underneath it, the small uh, uh, head cap also cannot be wiped over because it's very easy to take off and put it back again. With the turbans that require a lot of effort and time to put on, it's hard to take off and put on again. It is permissible to wipe over it because the Prophet ﷺ did that and this is part of the sunnah as well. What's the ruling on wiping over a wig? If a, patient, uh, a cancer patient who went through chemotherapy and lost all of his or her hair and they're wearing a wig to hide such a defect. If the wig is difficult to put back again, which is not the case. Usually a wig, it's very easy to take off and you can wipe over the head and put back on again. But if there's difficulty in doing that, then it is permissible to uh, wipe over it. What's the ruling on wiping over? And this is the third category. So the shoes, socks, and the likes, the turbans, the hijab of women. And this is an issue of dispute. Some scholars say that this is permissible, like Sheikh Islam in Taymiyyah, when there is fear of an illness or extreme uh, uh, temperatures, cold weathers, that would make it or introduce a lot of hardship over women. If you're in Canada in the middle of winter and it's very difficult to take off this headgear that is uh, uh, keeping you warm for wudu, the Sheikh Islam Taymiyyah says a woman is exempted and she can wipe over uh, that because Umm Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, used to do that as well. Number, five, uh, number four, uh, uh, surgical dressings and plastic casts. If I have a broken arm, in this case, there is no possibility of getting the water within. I can wipe over that because there is a hadith where the Prophet ﷺ indicated that a companion who died because of his wounds due to the wrong advice he was given by his friends when he performed ghusl, he said they killed him. It was sufficient for him to wipe over the dressing and no need for washing it. However, the plastic cast or the surgical dressings differ from the hoof or the socks in a number of aspects. Number one, the way of wiping over the socks or the shoes is very simple. It's symbolic. So if this is my foot, if I want to wipe over it with wet hands, I just do this on the top from the toes to the chin. I don't have to do this, the whole area, and I don't do the underneath of the foot. So it's just a symbolic one wipe from the toes upwards. And 
The second um, point or difference is the khuf is one day and night for a resident and three for a traveler. While the cast or the surgical dressings are not time bound because they are done out of necessity. So the di first difference that a, the cast, I have to wipe the whole area. The second difference is that there's no time frame for it. As long as I have the cast for a month, then I can wipe over it. Number three, unlike the hoof, I don't have to put the cast in the state of purity because usually I put it on forced, not out of will. So it's not that I can go and perform wudu then ask them to put it. No, it, is, it can be put in any state, alhamdulillah. And there are a number of issues that um, scholars talked about. So one day and one night for a resident, three days and three nights for a traveler. What if there's a mixture between the two? So if a traveler, while traveling, wiped over his socks, so now he has three days and three nights, but he arrived home on the second day. So what sh should he do? The scholars say now the period has been interrupted. He's not anymore considered to be a, um, a traveler. So it begins the wiping of a resident that is one day and one night. And likewise, if a resident wipes, let's say it's Asr time and I start to wipe and I took a flight and I traveled, what should I do? Some scholars say, no, okay, because you started as a resident, you should only have one day and one night and this is wrong. The moment you travel, then your status has changed and it is extended to three days and three nights. And if a traveler doubts whether he started wiping when he was a traveler or a resident, he continues to wipe as a traveler. And if a resident nullifies his wudu, then he performs wudu and he starts to wipe as a traveler, not as a resident, he will continue as a, res as, as a traveler. So not that because he uh, um, uh, performed wudu and put his socks on when he was a resident, he should wipe as a resident. No, now he traveled, the status changed, and Allah Azza wa knows best. Sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. ينمو العلم ويتقدم بتقنياته ومجالاته ومعه نطور أدواتنا في تقديم العلم الشرعي أكاديمية زاد زاد أكاديمية ينبوعها صاف صاف ليروي غلة الظمآن وتعلم الفقه الميسر عاملا بالشرع دون تعصب لفلان بشرى لنا زاد أكاديمية للعلم كالأزهار في البستان